Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a tutorial showing you how to overclock your graphics card. Who wants to run it stock anyway? Overclocking, while it can be a little intimidating, is actually very straightforward. When you buy a graphics card, you have a few sliders to play with that allows you to get the most out of your card. I'll be doing this tutorial using a couple high-end graphics cards that are designed for overclocking, the MSI R9 290X Lightning, and the EVGA GTX 780 with ACX Cooler, however you can overclock most any desktop GPU. Some graphics cards do overclock better than others, as when you start to overclock, you're putting more strain on things like the power delivery as well as the cooler, however even entry-level cards have at least some overclocking headroom. You also need to keep in mind that the rest of your system also needs to be able to handle overclocking. Make sure there's good airflow in your case to keep things nice and cool, and that you have a decent power supply with enough overhead to handle giving your GPU some more juice. One thing to definitely keep in mind is that overclocking, while very easy to do, isn't officially supported by the manufacturers. If you crank everything all the way up and your card breaks, don't expect to get a new one from the warranty. That said, things are pretty safe assuming you don't go completely crazy, and it's no coincidence that a lot of the graphics card companies actually create a lot of the overclocking software. My favorite utility is MSI Afterburner, which supports both AMD and Nvidia graphics cards, even if they aren't made by MSI. Inside, you'll find all the sliders you need to overclock your card, as well as taking a look at things such as fan speed and temperature. To overclock our R9 290X, we need to pay attention to three of these sliders, the power limit, the core clock, and the memory clock. Changing the power limit will allow the GPU to pull in more power, which is usually a necessity depending on how far you want to push the overclock. The core clock is the most important thing, as the higher this is, generally the better performance, and lastly is the memory clock, which also plays a big role in getting the most out of your card. Once you're ready to begin, it's best to start slowly. Bump up your power and core clock slightly, and then give it a try. While testing in actual games is always important, while we're working out settings, Combustor is a great tool that comes with Afterburner. Load up the GPU burn-in test and let it run for 5-10 to 10 minutes. Definitely keep an eye on your temperature to make sure it's not exceeding the max of your card, as well as watch the test itself closely. If you see artifacts like this randomly showing up in the image, you're pushing the overclock too high, so it's a good idea to pull back a bit and try again. Once you're looking at a stable core clock, it's time to move on to the memory. It's pretty much the same process, just slowly bump it up until you start running into artifacts or crashing. Now once you have both of them roughly where you want them, definitely tweak a little bit more, as sometimes, even though a core clock might be stable on its own, once you start cranking up the memory, it might kind of mess with things and vice versa, so definitely be sure to test both of them together to make sure that everything is nice and solid. Since the 290X Lightning is already overclocked nicely out of the box, I settled on 1140MHz on the core, 1500MHz on the memory, with a plus 25 bump to the power limit. With the GTX 780 set to 106% on the power limit, I got an extra 90 megahertz on the core and 300 megahertz more on the memory. Taking a look at the results in 3D Mark Firestrike, both cards see a nice little gain, with the 290X pulling in an extra 6% and the GTX 780 seeing nearly 8% more performance. In Bioshock Infinite, the 290X gets an impressive 10% improvement, where the overclocked 780 gets a 9% boost. Jump to Metro Last Light, and here again the 290X Lightning improved with an overclock by just under 10%, and the 780 pulls in just under 8%. If you're willing to spend a little time, overclocking can get you what is basically free performance. There are some risks, but as long as you don't go crazy, it can really pay off. So what do you guys think? Is overclocking worth it? Let me know in the comments below. Also, in case you guys missed it, I recently reviewed the HTC One M8 Google Play Edition, probably one of my favorite phones I've ever tried. So if you guys want to check out that video, it will be linked in the description of this video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.